Justin Trudeau was humiliated by Canadians again as he was heckled by angry Canadians while giving a speech about the housing crisis. Trudeau offered no real solutions. Instead, he pledged limitless spending to throw out the problem, as is the liberal way. The victims? Taxpayers who will foot the bill for Trudeau's fiscal recklessness. Righteous citizens fought back. They heckled and attacked Trudeau's speech, seeing through his empty rhetoric. All while he grandstands about provincial issues and his government fails on federal responsibilities like runaway immigration. But Trudeau won't take responsibility for the disaster his immigration policies have caused. He will, however, claim to be fiscally responsible while announcing $6 billion more in new and useless government spending. Throwing immense amounts of money hoping to fix a housing problem so big that the RBC is now reporting how the crisis is tearing Canada and Canadians apart in shocking new detail. Trudeau's days of dodging accountability are numbered. The seeking rage of Canadians denied their dreams will sweep away his enablers. Justice is coming. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Justin Trudeau could not possibly help himself and wait even a few days before getting absolutely humiliated once again at the hands of everyday Canadians. Trudeau held a press conference recently to babble endlessly about the housing crisis without offering any real solutions that would nip the problem at the buds. Instead, he happily did the only thing he knew how to do and vowed to spend endlessly on the issue without a second thought. The victim in this scenario, every tax-paying Canadian and their wallet, that will be open with no consent to satisfy the vain and overt spending of Trudeau and the Liberals. Trudeau thinks he can just throw money at an issue and it will be magically solved while everyone cheers and claps for the savior of all of Canada. Except this is real life and not one of Trudeau's daydreams. Trudeau is no saint and Canadians know it all too well. Canadians understand the fiscal disaster of funding a failing initiative only keep the tap open until it somehow fixes itself. This is utter insanity. But it is the liberal way of thinking and planning. And how exactly do we fight fire? Righteous Canadians answered with fire when they took their sweet time to embarrass Trudeau and heckle his stupid housing speech and his acknowledgement that immigration is maybe a tad too high in Canada. All while he is trying his hardest to absolve himself of any and all responsibility, denying that his corrupt immigration and housing policies were what got us here in the first place. You recently said your government is working on both housing supply and demand by turning the dial down on temporary immigration. Does that mean your government's immigration policy has contributed to record high housing unaffordability? It's really important to understand the context around immigration. Every year, we bring in about 450, now close to 500,000 permanent residents a year. And that is uh, part of the necessary growth of Canada. It benefits our, our, uh, our citizens, our communities, it benefits our economy. That, these are the levels that we have stabilized and, and grown steadily over the past years because that's what Canada needs to continue to have a strong economy and strong communities. However, over the past few years, we've seen a massive spike in temporary immigration whether it's temporary foreign workers uh, or uh, whether it's international students in particular that have uh, grown at a rate far beyond uh, what uh, Canada has uh, been able to absorb. Uh, to give an example, in 2017, 2% of Canada's population was made up by, of temporary immigrants. Now, we're at 7.5% of our population comprised of temporary immigrants. That's something uh, that we need to get back under control, both for the benefits of, uh, of those people, but uh, as international students, we're seeing uh, increasingly vulnerable to mental health challenges, to not being able to, uh, uh, to thrive and get the education they want, but also uh, increasingly more and more businesses uh, relying on temporary foreign workers in a way that's driving down wages in some sectors. So we want to get those numbers down. It's a responsible approach to immigration that continues on our permanent residence as we have, but holds uh, holds the line uh, a little more on the temporary immigration that has caused so much pressure in our communities. If you have not heard a single word or were too immersed with the sounds of fed up Canadians clouding Trudeau's very likely useless words, then there is no shame on you or anyone enjoying this for that matter. 
While Trudeau grandstands about provincial matters like rent control and school lunches, and while he talks a big game about investing in housing affordability every single year, then nothing changes except for the worse, his government has utterly failed to manage issues under federal responsibility. So it is completely understandable that some people would like to heckle him and his liberal goons, even during speeches. Runaway immigration is one of the starkest examples in the housing scenario and one that Trudeau will always run away from, denying that exacerbates housing unaffordability. Trudeau seems oblivious to the immigration crisis of his own making, or he is perhaps feigning ignorance to escape accountability. But who is he really trying to fool here when we have predicted for years how his irresponsible immigration policies will lead to Canada's decline and demise as Canadians start scrapping by just to survive? Canada's population just crossed 41 million, nearly nine months after hitting 40 million. This unprecedented growth occurred amidst a severe housing crunch and declining real wages. Trudeau himself acknowledged that rapid population growth was suppressing wages, driving up demand for social supports like food banks. Yet when questioned about immigration's impact on housing costs, he pretended he was hearing the news about the astronomical numbers facilitated by his government for the first time. Trudeau noted that permanent immigration remains around 500,000 per year. However, temporary immigration categories have skyrocketed, now comprising an incredible 7.5% of Canada's population. He then admitted these unsustainable immigration levels are something that we need to get back under control. If only Trudeau knew someone in charge of immigration policy with the power to address this crisis. Scratch that, imagine Trudeau catching the one person responsible for this crisis in the first place and had defended it countless times against the concerns and objections of Canadians and experts alike. Trudeau should probably fire this person. It might finally fix Canada for good. But enough sarcasm because the truth has always been that Trudeau and his government were the ones who enabled the massive immigration spike straining the housing markets, especially in major cities. With immigration intensifying an existing housing shortage, costs have become prohibitive for many Canadians. As families devote more of their budgets to housing, they have fewer resources for necessities like food. This is Trudeau's Canada after eight years of corruption, lies, ineptitude, and chaos. Canadians are struggling day to day while Trudeau thinks his fickle programs will help uplift even a fifth of the people he has caused immense misery to. Rather than take responsibility for the disaster his immigration mismanagement has exacerbated, Trudeau is playing provincial politics. He is wrongly intervening in rent control, school lunches, and other areas belonging to the provinces. Trudeau is talking a big game with the numbers and everything, but he fails yet again to connect the dots back to his own doing. He talks about temporary immigration and student immigrants, but never acknowledges his championing of these causes and initiatives. Now everything is out of control and no one is supposedly asking him why he let it get to this point. His solution is to keep investing and wasting taxpayers' money, hoping it would fool enough people to vote for him once again. And then he has the audacity to talk about being fiscally responsible as a liberal prime minister. Trudeau was simply asked about paying for all these expensive programs and if it would require extra funding only for him to just virtue signal and posture about his liberals' government fiscal responsibility by lying about how good the GDP is and how Banks of Canada are rating the establishment's fund management and planning highly. Can we expect higher taxes on the wealthy to pay for this spending? Uh, core to this liberal government approach has always been fiscal responsibility. We have the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7. We're the third largest economy in the world with a AAA credit rating from the international bond rating agencies. Our fiscal plan is stable and responsible, and we will continue to put fiscal responsibility as we invest in Canadians, in their communities, and in jobs at the center of our upcoming budget. Yes, of course, Trudeau is so fiscally responsible and diligent that he gave himself and all of his liberal goons a pay raise on the same day he increased a useless tax on Canadians. On April 1st, everyday Canadians awoke to higher costs of living while political elites lavished in pay raises, insulating them from economic pains. Liberal politicians greedily grabbed bigger paychecks for absolutely no rhyme or reason, and it was all funded by taxpayers. What a totally fiscally responsible way to manage taxpayers' funds in the middle of an affordability crisis. Or what about the time Trudeau was so fiscally responsible that he moved the election date by one week to get his Liberal and NDP gang to qualify for pensions on the backs of millions of Canadians' tax money? Warren, um, it's a little bit sleazy, um, this bill to change the Elections Act in Ottawa because of, of one little thing. Uh, they say that they have to move the date of the next fixed election from October 20th, 2025, to October 27th, 2025, because, well, the 20th is when the holiday of Diwali starts. Of course, they're also adding in extra voting days. And of course, over the last several years, they've made it so you can vote during the entire writ period, but they're saying it's for Diwali. 
really, a lot of us think it's about the fact that about 80 MPs qualify for their pension on October 21st, 2025, and a bunch of them, namely Liberals and New Democrats, are going to lose their jobs if an election is held before then. Do you buy the government's uh, line, or do you think this is all about getting millions of uh, dollars for uh, uh, politicians that are about to be fired? They're bandits. They're thieves. You're way nicer than me. They are bandits. This is pigs in the trough. They got their snouts way down in there. Just so everybody understands, the MPs still get what Preston Manning used to call the gold-plated MPs pension. Well, and no, no. It, it's changed a bit. It, back then, it used to be $6 that we put in for every one. Now it's 50-50 and not, not quite as generous as it used to be. Stephen Harper it's picked gold, up his own uh, It's gold-plated. I don't have one. I, so I, I don't have a pension like that either. No. Okay. So it's still good. They've, they've got a great pension. I think it kicks in at the age of 55 if they wanted to. Yep. But, you know, you need to get six years uninterrupted in the House of Commons. You need to be an MP for a term and a half. Well, look what Justin Trudeau has done. He's <laughs> nudged the date of the next election just by a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And as a result, presto, all of these MPs who previously would not have qualified under the old set election date will now qualify just by a matter of days and get this lifetime pension. So it's pretty gross. And that's why I call them a bunch of bandits. So look, in the grand scheme of things, moving the election uh, date by one week, that doesn't impact your life or mine. I've had some people write me panic. What do you mean Trudeau's moving it to October 2027? No, he's not doing that. <laughs> that would go past what even the Constitution allows. Yeah. So in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't impact our daily lives, but it's going to cost us big time. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation does, did a, an estimate. And just using average life expectancy and so on, um, they're figuring perhaps as much as $120 million with, you know, these guys getting between $32,000 and $49,000 a year to start, and then it going up, index to inflation, it goes up at sixty. dollars all these things, $32,000 to $49,000 a year. You're not going to get rich off of that, but you know what? That's a very nice cushion. If you're 55 and you start collecting $32,000 a year, yeah, you got to go find other work. You don't have to find that much work. This is nothing more than a clear message to any Canadian who has a keen eye, that the government is willing to steal, mismanage, and ruin if they can lie about it later and get away with it. The government is fiscally responsible. That might be the greatest joke Trudeau has ever told, and to say it in the middle of a conference announcing another $6 billion in taxpayer funds being thrown aimlessly at the housing crisis is just too ironic. The truth is Trudeau. The housing crisis has overstepped its breaking point according to a report by the RBC. This new sobering report from RBC highlights the deepening housing affordability crisis grip in Canada. Vancouver's market is in a full-blown catastrophe, while unaffordability reaches a 30-year high nationwide. Soaring interest rates have outpaced even slight price dips in most markets, reports RBC. In late 2022, median income households had to spend a staggering 63.5% of earnings on homeownership costs. That's up from below 40% a decade ago. In Vancouver, however, this ratio hit a crushing 106.4%. Prices remain so detached from local incomes that homeownership is restricted to the wealthy and privileged few. Trudeau's lack of leadership has allowed this disaster to unfold. Despite repeated warnings, his government sat idle as housing costs shot into the stratosphere. Trudeau never made any strides in curbing immigration or increasing fair wages for hardworking Canadians, and now Canadians suffer because Trudeau was too busy following the woke agenda without any common-sense thinking. Canada's unaffordability crisis demands an immigration reset. Intake must be scaled back to zero. Further immigration increases cannot be justified amidst the housing crisis Trudeau's policies have created. And Trudeau's ineffective and weak programs to help solve the issue offer absolutely no relief to the average Canadian when he can't be bothered to answer how he is going to use the money responsibly. And what will he invest in that will make this millionth time he has tackled the issue any different than the ones before. Spending.
we will be uh, releasing a full budget uh, in, on, uh, uh, in a few weeks. Uh, right now, we're talking about some of the elements in that budget, including today's announcement uh, on significant investments in housing supply to make sure that we're both building the infrastructure but also changing the way housing is built across this country. Over the past number of months, 170 different nine agreements, 179 different agreements have been signed across the country, not just for different projects here or there like the ones we're in, but to change the way housing is built in municipalities and regions across this country, to make it easier and stronger and faster uh, to build on uh, underused land, uh, to use more federal lands, to concentrate zoning and densification. There's a significant uh, change in the way housing is built across the country, and we're going to continue doing that with this announcement today. A responsible prime minister would acknowledge immigration's challenges under current conditions. He would initiate comprehensive reforms to align immigration with economic and societal absorptive capacities. Instead, we are left with a liberal goon in charge of our economy and our lives. It is high time Trudeau is held accountable for all his never-ending misdeeds that have affected Canadians in the most negative of ways. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau will keep spending money without addressing the root causes of the housing crisis? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.